My name is Rhapsody and welcome to Monster Train. It is finally time for us to get started on the full Monster Train series for the channel. No longer in beta, full release is my best friend now. If you are coming to this video and you have never seen any Monster Train content before in your life and you would like an introduction to the game, there will be a link in the description down below to the first video that I recorded in the beta that very, very slowly and methodically goes through the tutorial, explains a lot about the game, and starts to explore some of the mechanics of the game. In this particular episode, though, I'm going to be playing one of the new clans that is available to me as part of this being the full release of the game. Uh, for those who saw the stream, the publisher stream that I happened to do for Good Shepherd for this game, I did Stygian and Umbra in that. So I'm going to be moving across to do Umbra and Melting Remnant. We'll start with Melting Remnant as our primary and Umbra as our secondary. Then I'm going to be cycling around for a fairly long period of time doing the Umbra, Stygian and Melting Remnant because I've done a lot of Hellhorned and Awoken in the past. And then around episode 10, maybe episode 8, I'm going to start moving the Awoken and the Hellhorn back into the rotation until we're basically just rotating around all of the different primary and allied clans that we can have. So, because I'm going to be playing a character that I have never, ever played before. One sec while I just turn the volume down just a touch. There we go. Uh, because I'm going to be playing a clan that I've never played before, I'm not going to turn the Covenant rank up as high as I can at the moment, which is Covenant 6. We'll start covering all of the new content, and then we'll start worrying about ascending the Covenants through the new content. Without any further ado, let's go into the first run. I have still not played any of these new clans off screen at all, even slightly. So do not worry, this is going to be a completely blind experience for me as well. Okay. Entombed Explosive has five health, uh, is a tomb type card. There's also Waxer type card and, you know, spells as you might imagine. Uh, extinguish. So Extinguish triggers on its death, deal 35 damage to the front enemy unit. There's also Extinguish draw one. Okay, so this is like a minion sacrifice deck. Uh, also, cleanse all units of effects that don't benefit Seraph. So that's going to cleanse buffs, unfortunately. Add a Morsel Miner to your hand. Morsel Miner gives the Eater plus five, plus five. Okay. Not bad, not bad. So as we go through the new cards, the new mechanics, and the uh, new features of these new clans, I will make sure to read them out and explain them on first encounter. And then from then on, it will kind of just be assumed that that's already known knowledge. Uh, most of it will become pretty, pretty second nature, pretty instantaneously. Okay, let's get an artifact first. Apply days to enemy units whenever they enter the room below the pyre. Friendly units gain plus three, probably don't want that because I want to sacrifice my own units ideally. So I'll take Light's Gift. I don't know if this is actually going to be good for us overall though. All right. Yeah. So, let's actually have a look at the deck by base. So, because we are part Umbra, we start with three Shade Splitters here. Add a common or uncommon Morsel unit to your hand. Morsel units get eaten by the front non-Morsel unit at the end of the turn. And when they are eaten, they trigger the effect on the card. We also have Dreg Burnout 2. Counts down every turn. When Burnout runs out, this unit dies. Huh. Interesting. We also have Rector Flicker. Uh, Rector Flicker. Barely Noah. Uh, oh, and a Votivri as well. Okay, cool. Harvest. Triggers whenever a unit on this floor dies. That's really interesting because I have also all of these units that are going to get uh, munched. They're going to get eaten, which means they die, which means they trigger the harvest effect. We can make Rector Flicker. Reg it's going to be so difficult for me to say this correctly. Rector Flicker. We're going to make them pretty big really quickly. What is this though? Resolve Reform a random unit. Reform is return a defeated friendly unit to your hand. Enhance it with Burnout 1, so it'll die at the end of the turn. And plus 5, plus 5, and 0 cost. Interesting. Unfortunately, we're not going to want that because we can have all the morsels that are going to die and them coming back with extra stats doesn't really matter that much. Uh, so, no, we will take the uh, Rector Flicker here. 
Recta flicker over the Recta flicker. Okay. Non boss enemy units enter with spikes three. Is that a problem for us? Is that actually a problem for us? Yes, because it does mean that a lot of my morsel. Well, are many of my morsels going to attack? Not many of them actually have a. Never mind. This shouldn't be a problem for us because we'll get all of the elf. It's, it's fine. It's fine. I want the money. I want to. I want to be really money. What? I'd like to money. All right. Uh. Okay. Uh. It's it's making morsel and shade splitter. Ooh. And Tumbra Morsel now gives you four to your HP. HP. HP, rather. You got stats on you, bud. Stacks of stacks on, but just not much um, damage. We'll get the frontliner for us. Eh, that'll die, so the Shade Splitter will still give it to the, the Rector Flicker there. But you know what? No, I'm going double train suit on the top floor. <laughs> Setting up a floor that might actually be able to do some kills here. Okay, so you have Burnout. Looks like we're definitely taking some damage here, and that's okay. Yeah. Morsel, Morsel Minor. I mean, this, this is going to be fine. We're going to be fine against the boss at the absolute least. So what? You attack, you attack, and then drag attacks at the very end, or I can even get drag attack first. And then, yeah, unfortunately, we're like one damage off of being able to take both of them out. Yeah, if that one extra damage had been dealt there. If only. Go Entombed Explosive in the front line, and then Shade Splitter, Shade Splitter. Yeah. So what, I took seven damage here, and as a result, I'm going to pick up 75 gold? Yeah. Yeah, worth. I'd say worth. Okay, Wicklash. Enhance a friendly unit with plus five damage and apply Burnout 2, so it'll die in two turns. Uh, apply Burnout 3 to friendly Burnout units. Oh, okay, no, 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 Because when Burnout 2... So if you give this to a unit that doesn't have Burnout, it will die at the end of the Burnout. But if you give this to a unit that does have Burnout, it'll extend its lifespan. Interesting. Still probably not what I'm going to want to do, though. Um, okay, apply 10 health and Burnout 2 to a friendly unit. I'm going to take the money. Okay. Plus one capacity on this floor. It gets consumed. Oh, that's a great pickup early, especially if I can remove the consumption from it. Deal three times damage to a enemy unit. If it slays, you gain two energy back. Interesting. You do it directly to them as well. Hmm. So if there's an enemy with two health... Sorry, even three health, right? And you kill them with this, uh, you gain energy back. When you have one mana, obviously. Uh, apply Lifesteal 4 and Ember Drain 2 to a friendly unit. So this means Ember Drain 2 means that the second turn, uh, I, or rather the turn after, I will lose one energy per stack of Ember Drain. And then the turn after that, I'll lose one energy per stack of Ember Drain. But the Ember Drain has decreased by that time. So I lose two energy next turn, one energy the turn after, and then nothing. Uh, in order to get lifesteal, which is whenever a unit with lifesteal attacks, it restores health equal to the damage dealt. Does lifesteal decrease over the time? I don't know. I'm going to take space prim uh, prism, though. That's definitely, definitely where we're going with that. Get a remnant unit, forge my powers. Uh, get an umbra unit and forge... Mm. Remnant unit and forge the uh, forge the unit instantly is appealing, but more appealing than that is gain an Umbra unit and then 
start working with our spells. Because the Umbra unit might be... Ooh, might be really good. Gorge. Triggers whenever it eats a morsel unit. Oh my god! Morsel Maker. Resolve. Summon an Antumbra morsel and a Magma morsel in this room. That'll just constantly feed. Oh, hell yes! And upgrade a spell to remove consume and cost plus one. And then I can even make it cost negative one as well. So I can actually play it constantly. But making of a morsel, making that cost less is actually even better. So I can always play that when I draw it. I'm gonna take making of a morsel. Uh, should I start purging some cards from this deck? Let's have a look at what we have in the next area. Uh, we have another Umbra unit along with the ability to forge my spells and a concealed cabin. I'll hold on to my money. I don't need to remove things right now. I'm doing pretty good. Okay. Non-boss enemy units now gain four if I take this for a unit draft. I like a unit draft. And their damage honestly isn't that much. There are going to be multiple of them on the same floor at the same time. Ugh. See, I'm just thinking about like how much HP I'm getting back on Rector Flicker every turn. I'm getting... I'm getting 10. I'm getting 10 constantly. As soon as I have that Morsel Master out there. Oh god, this is so good. I think I'm guaranteed... Yeah, I'm guaranteed to get it in my opening hand as well. Uh, let's also sacrifice you. Mm -hmm. Don't have the extra capacity on this floor, unfortunately. Votivory, endless extinguish draw one. I'll put it down here. It's probably ultimately going to be what kills the Fortress Cycle, if I had to guess. Just munch on those, and then they get resummoned. I got extra stats. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I need more capacity on this floor so I can actually play morsels down there right now. But to be fair, we have already addressed that. We just haven't gotten the card that addresses it yet in this uh, cycle through. Okay. There we go. Got him. God. <laughs> we need like trample or sweep or something. Because Rector needs to attack more times than that for us to actually have like a good effect, but it worked out well. Uh, reformer unit? I probably don't want to do that. They're already zero cost. Descend unit, moving unit down to the back of that floor. Uh, we set up on the bottom floor, and we have to have the Morsel Master on that floor as well. So descending units down to that basically just means I'm not playing other units uh, on that floor after I expand its capacity anymore, which, no, I'm not going to want to do that. Extinguish applies stealth one to friendly units, not a target in combat, loses one stack each turn. Um, not necessary, I don't think. Pack Morsels, three uncommon or rare Morsels into your hand. Interesting, very interesting to me. I don't often have the space to actually use these, so I might not. I might go with Space Prism again. Uh, apply Rage 2 and Ember Drain 2 to a friendly unit. Start of the turn, you lose one for every stack of Ember Rain. Decreases every turn. Okay, definitely Space Prism. Gorge, you gain damage shields whenever you get... <gasps> Paraffin Thug? Wait, 
Wickless Baron also actually looks really good. Paraffin Thug, Slay, gain 20 gold. That, not for this run, but that looks like it could be absolutely ridiculous. I could also get a Crucible Warden, just put it up on the top floor and just fill it with damage shields. But also I could do that with a Wickless Baron and get it really, really... I mean, is the Wickless Baron ever going to eat more than 15 units? Probably not, right? That said, this is when you want to trigger Harvest consistently. This is from Gorge, but Gorge is how we trigger Harvest, so... Crucible Warden, Crucible Warden, Crucible Warden. I should probably get a second floor. Maybe even the Crucible Warden is the one that gets the Morsel Master and every, like, all of the... Re uh, no. There's not enough other Morsels. What I definitely know is I need a second floor. I'll take Crucible Warden to be part of that second floor. Okay, and then we're going over for spells. Hmm. Upgrade a spell to uh, remove consume. And give it a cost plus one. I can put that on the uh, space prism again. Honestly, I probably don't want two space prisms constantly cycling through the deck. Um, yeah. What is the max limit? It might be seven. Use the cost of another... Actually, I probably reduce the cost of this making of a morsel so that if I get the duplicate, I duplicate that. Morsel Master is also good to duplicate after I get one Space Prism off, put two Morsel Masters on the same floor, eat four things every turn with a Rector Flicker, and gain uh, plus four, plus nine. Wait, no, it's... Hang on. So it would be plus eight plus 18 every turn. It's pretty good. It's, it's fine, I guess. You know. Look at the Umbra units here. Gorge, damage shield, don't. Yeah, second Morsel Master. If you're gonna give it to me, I'm gonna take it. <gasps> Dang it. No, don't, don't give me the five times. Okay, good. If that was the five times uh, duplicate, I would have been really annoyed that I hadn't already reduced the cost of the make of the morsel. An iceberg looms large over the bone shaker. Illuminated by the light creeping into the cavern, you see a figure inside, trapped. Runes etched on the ice read, Witness the false prophet, forger of the rail and covenant, now damned and broken. He must have been a prisoner of the winged. Poor soul. The remains of his tools are frozen nearby. Perhaps he can help even you in death. Ooh, uh, plus one capacity per floor, plus one, uh, plus five on a random floor. Negative one on each floor, plus magic power. Honestly, it's probably history of the world. Then just mega stack that floor. Okay. You're able to retrieve the tome from the ice. The pages still somehow dry after all this time. You leave the man behind, false prophet or not. You have a feeling he's helped hell more than you know. Now I definitely want to start removing cards from this deck. Uh, first off, Emberstone, get another cost lowering on making a morsel. Start purging. Honestly, like these dregs are nothing to us right now. But they're also, they're not the least. Yeah, it's train stewards are the least. <laughs> this votivory is also not great, but it is at least an extra draw. Save some money. All right, Daedalus, let's go. I'll set up on whatever floor you want me to set up on, bud. Mega reinforce that floor. Okay. Rector Flicker, Morsel Maker, Shade Splitter.
I mean, hang on. The Rector Flicker... I mean, it does gain health from the Harvest. It's, I was thinking... Hang on. Let's look at Morsel again. This unit is eaten by the front non-Morsel unit after the next round of combat, right? So I, I can't put the Crucible Warden behind and then get the Rubble Morsel, uh, Morsel to be eaten by that. I'm going to give it health here. Obviously making of a morsel. Pop a morsel maker in the back line. Okay. Uh, no, you don't want to go on that floor. Honestly, I'm just wasting all of these units on the bottom floor. I want them to die. It just happens to be ideal for us that they do. I'm pretty sure I still have space on this floor to play morsels. Yeah, I do. Oh, it's reached the seven unit limit. I, <laughs> despite that, I still can't do anything on that floor. Well, look, if that's the case, then uh, I'm glad I have the Crucible Warden to actually throw things into. That's how it's going to be. That's how it's going to be. Now all I can do is find out how I'm going to deal with it. Oh, we're so healthy. Damage shields on the top floor does nothing. Let's throw you away there with a the drag behind. He gains two and one lifesteal. 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 Uh, restores health equal to the damage dealt. Yeah, so the Rector Flicker would love that. I can't put it on him, but they would love it. Oh my god. <laughs> Multi strike, sweep, anything, please. Uh, okay. Uh, we're not going to kill many things here on the top floor, it doesn't look like. Morsel Miner isn't going to deal damage by itself. Rubble Morsel isn't going to deal damage by itself. All right, so we're going to have what? Three units. Are we going to take three damage in this fight, it looks like? I mean, I could put a votary behind this. Only take two. Sure. Gets rid of the votary. I like that this is a unit sacrifice deck. I have felt that that's been missing, to be entirely honest. But for a while, that was the case. That's a lot of damage shields. It's not going to matter at all, but it's good to have it, I guess. I don't have it than not to have it. Yeah, it's pretty hard to cut through that much HP. <laughs> the Morsel Masters are actually contributing significantly. With their 10 damage, they're slicing down units. Uh, in the back line that I kind of already wanted Trample or uh, or Sweep or Multi-Strike in order to actually reach. Extinguish, return a random defeated unit to your hand, enhance it with plus 50. So this should just say Reform, right? Extinguish, Reform, and enhance the unit with plus 50 damage. Kill a Morsel unit, trigger Eaten and Gorge abilities as if it had been eaten two times. Huge. We'll take it. Harvest oh, game. <sighs> Set that up on the top floor with the Crucible Warden? Just gain money? I said I want to be really money. This makes me really money. Friendly burnout units gain burnout one, burnout three. So it has burnout four by itself. 
I like the idea of having like win on a clock. Otherwise, you know, you, you melt. I'm gonna take a Wickless Tycoon. Here's the interesting thing. I don't think I go for the extra capacity anymore. I don't think I need the extra capacity anymore. Unless, unless. If I go capacity plus one, then Rector Flicker, the Morsel Maker and the extra Morsel Maker, right? Cause you're two capacity, you're three by yourself. So you'd be an extra one. Uh, this will be able to overstack the floor by itself, right? So I can put them in a six room, which gives me the ability to put the Crucible Warden and the Tyrant in the plus five room, and then just constantly put morsels behind them in order to get a bunch of money. I think that does make us really money. And I said at the start of the run, that that's what I wanted to be. I could not have been clearer. Duplicate any card except for your champion. Gain a remnant unit, remove two cards from your deck. That's probably just like the way we get powerful here. Remove two cards that we don't use. So obviously, train steward, train steward. They're too high in capacity. I don't want to play them at all. Duplicate anything except for your champion. And here we get another making of a morsel. Gain a remnant unit. Don't want any of those. Lady of the house, burnout three. Oh, good. This, that's so good. Great, your champion, and now you have more from the harvest. This burnout? No! You know, this big that? No! But yeah, the accumulator, definitely. Enemies enter with armor 10 is actually probably too bad for me. I can't give these armor 10 because they have two health by themselves, so they won't get killed by the Morsel Master because they'll have 12 health with the armor. Also, I've got to remember not to cast on the floor that the Masters of Light are on. Yeah. Oh my god. Rector Flicker, Morsel Maker, Morsel Maker, Wickless Tycoon on the top floor. But I've got to make sure that I don't cast on the floor as the Clipped Reflector, because then they encant and they gain extra stats. I don't want them to stats. I would like them to not stats, please. Okay. Morsel, morsel, morsel. I'm casting in the pie room to avoid the previously mentioned mistake I could make. Oh, God. If enemies ever have a harvest trigger, I'm screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Very much hope that doesn't happen. Uh, okay, top floor is doing good. Honestly, proud of you, top floor. Keep it up. Maybe I shroud spike my own uh, my own magma morsel at this point, just to gain what six times. So six times four is twenty four. Twenty four more damage. Yeah, picking up some damage right now seems like a good pick. Especially considering this is about to go to the next floor with 40 HP, so it'll... It will die, but the backline unit lives if I do that, so... Great. It only triggered Harvest once, but to be fair, that's how it probably should be, let's be real. Go, unit burnt out. I gotta say, I'm loving the the combination between Umbra and the Remnants. Seems like such a natural fit here. Okay, I'm gonna expand the size of this room twice, maybe one more time, and then we actually play- Oh no, wait, again, seven unit limit. It's fine, it doesn't make a difference to how I was gonna turn- uh, play this turn, rather. Oh god, the money. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> oh, the stats. They're so good. Let me expand the size of this one. Oh, 
Oh, I mean, it's very early to get some that breaks for money. Just saying, seems like it's gonna be great. And obviously I want as many units to die here on the top floor as possible. Oh. <laughs> so good. Oh. You have to love it. You have to. You're not allowed to not to. Um, let's quickly get as many morsels as I can to get them consumed. Perfect. <laughs> oh, I'm so pleased this is working how I imagined it might. Not that I have any reason to suspect that it wouldn't, but in particular, like, I was looking at this thinking, are they gonna overlap like that? Because that's ridiculous. And yes, yes it is. To, to echo a, uh, a feeling that has been uh, put forward by a, a colleague of mine, Rito, uh, games, in games like this, seeing something like that, that looks, lo it, it feels like you're discovering some, some incredible technique that can't have been thought of before because it's so powerful, but the developers obviously put it in there for you to have the ability to exploit. And it feels like you're a, you're, you're a GD brain genius. Uh, deal damage to enemy units equal to three times the number of friendly unit deaths this battle. I kill four units a turn. And this hits the whole floor. I'm taking it. Trigger feeding on morsel units? Wait, do I want that? Excavated ember, consume... Gain to energy draw. Oh. That's really good. They replace themselves with the draw. And they gain two energy. That's really good. I don't think we need it, but it is really good. Um, yeah, trigger feeding on morsel units. So that'll eat all of the morsel units early, but like I don't have the ability to replace them with a bunch of other stuff. Unless. If I trigger the eating of the Morsel Makers and stuff like that, then I can put other units on that floor. But honestly, that doesn't matter to me. No, I don't care about any of these. Except for the Amber Cache. But the Amber Cache, do I care about that much? It, uh... It removes an initial... Oh, but it's, it's really good for the Shroud Spike. It is really good for the Shroud Spike. I'll take it. It's also another card to make Golden. Small consideration to be making this point in time, but a consideration nonetheless. Force your units gain new powers. Don't really care about that. Like, only thing I would care about is multi-strike on the Crucible Warden, but even... Do I? I can't go just for multi-strike, right? Quick, don't care about it. Endless, don't care about it. Uh, large Stone, definitely don't. In fact, anti-care about it. Uh, multi-strike, I care about. I... Is that all the minion upgrades? I don't think I care. I don't think I want them. Remove two cards from the deck, an event, and dupe another card seems good to me. We'll go to the event first. In case it gives me things I want to remove and or dupe. Mm. Give a unit 2020 and purge, so whenever I play it, it removes itself from the deck. Or give a spell plus 22 its magic power and purge. I don't have any spells that accept magic power right now. So instead, I will use this as a way to remove probably an Entombed Explosive, honestly, from my deck. No, but they're really good damage early when I desperately need it. Probably a Dreg then, I guess. Yeah, let's get a Dreg out of here. So I'm less doing this to buff a unit, and I'm more doing it just to remove that unit. Speaking of removing units, then let's remove the other two dregs. And then duping another card. What if we put a Morsel Maker on the top floor? With the Crucible Warden and the, uh, 
and the Wickless Tycoon. So Wickless Tycoon and the Crucible Warden take up two spaces. The Morsel Maker and the Morsel Maker Summons take up three more spaces. And that's in the plus five. So it's six plus five is 11. So one minion, one minion, one, two, three, five minions on that floor. And then I still have the ability to put down two morsels there per turn. Yeah, let's get another Morsel Maker. Time to make some morsels. Uh, non boss enemy units gain six damage. I don't gain a single care in the world. I do not want the bottom floor where these enemies are going to be stealthed to be the floor that gets the plus five. That would be a problem. We would still be able to live, but it'd suck. No. Okay, good. Tycoon, Flicker, Ember Cash definitely, Shade Splitter. Um, I need to buff the top floor faster than I need to buff the bottom floor, I think. Mm -hmm. So that'll deal three damage to the whole floor, clearing it. Great to see. You love to see it. Let's make a morsel miner. This, uh, this Harvest Armor 10 situation is very bad. Not good. I, uh, I think I need the Rector Flicker to get real big real quick. Give you that. One more morsel maker on the top floor. Oh. Enhance the size there. Temple morsel. Uh, I'm gonna get another morsel on this floor, honestly, just for the extra stats. Yeah, these uh these units of light, they're gonna go to the top floor and they're gonna be big. Like problem big. Okay. Shade split the health. Bunch of damage shields. Yeah, we're not doing anything to that overcharged tank. It's going up to the... Oh, God, don't... Don't do me like this. You can't do me this dirty. You're not allowed. Oh, God. It might just be the first one that manages to damage us like this. God, it can't be another one. Ugh. Increase the size of that. I would increase it again if I could increase it again, but I can't increase it again, so I won't increase it again. Savvy? Make him morsel. Make him morsel. Um, we'll, we'll, we will be able to kill on the top floor. Let's just get rid of those. Uh. 
Okay. Ow. A lot of damage. A uh, lot of, sorry, armor given. That doesn't kill on that floor. So I do 49, 4, 4, 10, 10, 49, 28. I do 20, 77. If I have Fatal Melting here, I actually kill the Overcharged Tank before it gets the ability to respond to me. Read before it gets the ability to start triggering uh, its, its uh, arm gain. And that's a kill. Fatal Melting is also a ridiculous amount of damage. Got him. Whew. <laughs> oh, nice. Worked out pretty well, I feel. Oh, crumbs. You have a way to apply endless in battle now? If I give this to a morsel miner, do I just get a morsel miner every time? I have to, right? But do I want it? I don't need it. I have all these making of morsels. No, it's just another card in order to... Eh, it's fine. Reform two random units actually even looks a little better than it to me. But also, I do have to worry about the space considerations. Obviously, Rector Flicker and the two Morsel Makers is a full floor. And then Crucible, Morsel Maker, and Wickless Tycoon only leaves me with two spaces anyway. So I, I get more than two units in a turn naturally anyway. So Sacred Witch makes no sense here. While I could take Crucible Extension, I already have, like, enough. Apply Rage 5 to get Multi-Strike 1. You get Ember Drained on following turns, basically all of your Ember, but Multi-Strike. Multi-Strike is one of the fastest way I can add damage. Yeah, I, I have to take Furnace Tap here. It's one of the fastest ways I can add damage to my, my deck. I do have to wait until I have my setup finished, basically, before I play that, though. I'm gonna go over here to the random artifacts as well as the health, because the health feels necessary. Random artifacts could be ridiculous. Merchant costs reduced by 25%, sure. Fire starts with armor 15 each battle. I'll take that as well. Then I'll reroll the shot. First time each turn an enemy unit dies, add two morsel units to hand. That'll give me morsel units the turn after, I guess? I'm going to take all of them. Alabaster Guardians have Multi-Strike. Fell improves the units with Rage. Sure. Just don't plus the bottom floor, please. Don't you dare. Don't do it. Don't do it to me. <clears throat> yeah, that's the bottom floor. Of course it is. that there, put the Wickless Tycoon behind it, Rector, I'm gonna put a Jeweler there for the sake of the Wickless, 
trying to keep it around, you know. We're leaving a whole clipped ref uh, guardian to go entirely. S it started the fight by putting. Ooh, you you gave it range both. Life just got real bad for us. Like I was never gonna remove this clipped guardian before it got to the top floor. It's just not happening. And it got rage on the bottom floor and the second floor, and it has ninety health. Well. I'm just losing a lot of pie health here. I don't, I don't have a choice in that. It's not a thing I can change anything about. That's fine. If that's how that is, that's how that is. We need to focus on what we can do now. Lifesteal. That seems like that would actually be quite useful in this level. You buffed them again! You follow this unit all the way up, buffing it every time, and it has the most health. Come on! That's- this is screwed up, right? That sucks, right? <laughs> this- Oh. Okay, well, hmm. That's how that- that's how that is. It's fine. Can't do anything about it. Just, just keep chugging along. You can't follow him into the pyre room. Don't have to worry about that at least. God. Well, I'm gonna take some damage to you as well, but thankfully you don't do any damage. Finally, something that doesn't do damage. So five units on this bottom floor. So if I put down both morsel miners, I'm done. Furnace tap you. Making the morsel in the top floor just to get the extra morsel. Not that I'm playing any of them. Okay. Ow. But now we're fine. Yeah, we get Ember Drained a bunch. Can't do anything. That makes sense, though. That's what we bought in for. So I can use the uh, the excavated to kind of get out from under the no energy situation. But uh, don't need to. Actually, you know what? No, I, I'll do that and I'll enhance the size of this floor. Just because I don't want it to look like it's overstacking. Not that it matters at all. It doesn't. <clears throat> a 
I'm always looking for as many people as I can get to die here on the bottom floor for the sake of the money I get from it. Morsel uh, Miner, Magma Morsel, good enough. Really? That's not even gonna... We lost that floor? How? A unit that is negating a ridiculous amount of damage like this, I I thought it was a shoo-in for a win. Thankfully we have a whole second floor though. Okay, I'm gonna quickly just gain a bunch of extra health. Just in case, because I'm feeling like I'm running out of health. Oops. Oh, sorry, that was the enemy that was running out of... I always get those confused. Uh, consume game trample, huge. Enhance friendly units with plus three times... Wait. Plus three X. Uh, huh? Hang on, am I just interpreting that wrong? Yeah, 2x times, so what is plus 3x? Oh, I guess it's giving them plus 3 time, uh, 3x attack. So plus is just saying that it's adding that attack rather than actually like modifying how this works. Okay, cool. Uh, trample? I don't know if Trample's necessary at this point. What with the multi-strike already on Rector Flicker. I'll take it just in case, but I don't think it is. Hmm. Drawing an extra card per turn. Gets me to making it a morsel much more quickly. It actually gets me my setup more quickly. That's why I've got to take it. Just need my setup more quickly. I want the 20 pyre health, but I also really want the artifact and the two removal. So two removal at this point would probably be like Shade Splitter, Shade Splitter. Actually, it might be Votivry Shade Splitter. Yeah, it's probably Votivry Shade Splitter at that point. All right. You did have multi-strike. Okay then! Thank you! <laughs> what I was there for! Uh, grand plus three sacks of burnout each time it's applied. No, no, I don't want them to be longer lived. I will take the 40 health there though, so it's way better than the 20 health I would have gotten on the other side. Upgrade the champion again. I'm going for the higher stats. This, this, this is now a good unit before it even harvests. Deck, get the votivery and the shade splitter out of there. And then interesting. So that so now the final Dark Forge upgrade is before the final area rather than just directly before the Seraphine. Interesting. All the by the way, all of the gorge effects and all of the well, actually the yeah damage shield does count as a uh, a buff, so that would be removed. Uh, but all of the gorge effects, like harvest and stuff like that, does not count as a buff for the sake of the uh, seraph, which is the only reason I'm running this deck. I 
I probably want to buy out relics here, then refresh and buy out more relics, if I had to guess. So I'm not... Actually, you know what? It's only 30 to re-roll here. Large stone. You actually gave it to me. Well, damn, now that's interesting. Because I, I want to put that on the Crucible Warden. And in fact, I'm going to. Because now the Crucible Warden is giant by base. So it does... Like... The, those two upgrades were very important. The Dark Forge upgrade and the Multi-Strike Large Stone upgrade were very important because as we saw previously, when this deck dies is when I don't have the time to actually erect my units. The start of battle, enemy units appear on each floor. Uh, so those are going to be the Wilt Wings, deal five damage to the front enemy unit on death. Um, I'll be able to take a couple of them out. If I set up on the top floor, I'll be able to take all of them out. I'm taking the coins. Come on, top floor. Ooh, yeah, 25% of them are just going to instantly die when spawning in as well. Bottom floor got made lot. You, hmm, that's exactly what I didn't want. Yeah, you're about to give Ember Drain to whoever is in the front line if you manage to uh, deal damage to him, unfortunately. Uh... Rector Flicker there. I have a morsel behind it. God, I wish you had no damage. You've got sweep. That's even worse. I don't know if I can even put down the Wickless ty uh, Tycoon yet. No, I can't. Thank you for the money. Okay. Uh... Yeah, because it, with its sweep, the uh, the pie wings is going to kill all of my uh, magma morsels, which means that I'm never getting any damage on the Crucible Warden. Crucible Warden does need to be on the bottom floor this turn, though. Yeah, seven units on that floor. Even if I put another Morsel Master there, I'm not going to have the space to actually support it. Uh... Oh, this is all bad. You need to go there, if nothing else, just to deal some damage. Okay. We're going to have to furnace tap. Go jeweler, miner, excavator behind you. Now it's just whether or not I put like the entombed. Ah, I can't put the entombed explosive in front. Oh my god, both the morsel excavator and miner are gonna die to the pyre wings, but oh. It's entirely my fault. Bad play. Bad, bad. I didn't even think about it. Uh, I'm going to be super ember drained next turn. If I want to be able to take down the light wings, I need to have trample on my top line. Yeah. 
No energy for me. Thankfully, I actually have a still like load of things I can do on zero. Yeah. I I am sorry that I haven't already explained this, uh, but if you aren't familiar with trample, the uh, morsel units get eaten. Uh, at the end of their turn, they trigger eaten. This unit is eaten by the front non-morsel unit after the next round of combat. Uh, I, I was taking for granted that people may have seen the uh, the publisher stream, but I shouldn't necessarily take that for granted. Uh, especially considering, like, it had the giant overlay. I understand if people didn't necessarily want to watch that. Got it. Okay, so, uh, morsel units, uh, gorge units, when they eat morsels, trigger the effect. Morsel units trigger eaten at the end of the turn, get eaten by the front non-morsel unit in combat. We mentioned that before, a little bit of an overview at the time. Harvest triggers on death, already mentioned that one before. Um, but the most important one, where are we, where are we, where are we, uh, that I was referring to right now. Ah, is trample. Okay, when attacking, excess damage is applied to the subsequent enemy unit. So if, an, if a unit has 100 damage, and there is a 1 health unit and then a 100 health unit in line, it will deal 1 damage to the front unit, and then the excess 99 gets dealt to the 100 health unit, and the 100 health unit lives. If they were in the opposite order, it would deal 100 damage to the 100 health unit, it would have no excess damage, so it wouldn't kill the 1 health unit. That's how trample works. Sorry, I didn't give that overview earlier. My bad. Okay. Messed up in exactly the same way on that floor as well, by the way. Let the pie wings sweep away all my stuff. Use the excavated ember to actually get myself the morsel maker and the wickless tycoon that I am so richly deserved. Don't need the Intubes Explosive. It would just mean more Ember Drain. Okay. Let's go for Excavated Ember. We'll drop a Morsel Miner here. And then Shroud Spike it. For Statistics. And then drop two more units here just for the HP. Uh, the HP, the money they'll give me. Oh, yes. I didn't even lose all of my armor in this battle, but I will pick up the 300 gold from the challenge. Big boy. Consume, gain one energy for each friendly unit death this battle. If I get that in the same hand as the uh, the Shroud Spike, this gets insane. I have to. I have to try. Uh, there's also deal 20 damage to a random enemy unit four times. Slay, gain two energy when it works. <laughs> Another thing that looks like it'd be pretty ridiculous if I happen to get it in the same hand as my uh, the, the Memories of the Melted. I'm going to take it just in case. It looks like it'd be funny. Okay. Grading minions doesn't really hold any appeal for me at all anymore. So, yeah, definitely going out this way. Definitely want the pyre health. Give a spell holdover. Ooh, I could give holdover to space prism. Yeah, I don't need it on space prism, though, is the thing. I honestly don't need holdover on any of these. Uh, fatal meeting, honestly. No, it's it's decreased the cost of fatal meeting, and then it's give it holdover. Definitely. Let's look at the artifacts here. Whenever you summon the second unit in a turn, gain three energy. That's uh, We do that all the time, forever, easily. I'll take that. Uh, volatile gauge has been changed. Whenever you draw a card, it's cost is round between zero and three, and you draw plus three each turn. That is huge. 
Uh, I'm going to take the lifesteal here as well because it will enable me to heal back up after I take hits that I cannot avoid on the uh, the big boy. That is the Crucible Warden. Roll. Morsel units gain damage shield one. So that will give me the ability to use Morsel units to tank hits for me. I'm unlikely to do that, but I have the ability to. Hearts with Consume have a 50% chance to be discarded instead. That's also interesting. I mean... I'm going to take that. Uh, take the Wing of Technology as well, for sure. And then dupe any card except my champion. Another Fatal Melting is interesting. Uh, might be another Memories of the Melted, honestly. Make it more likely they get in the same hand as the other things. Alright, Seraph. Uh, it's... Time to go! I'll remove half of my buff and debuff effects. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna help. Somehow, I think I'm still gonna have a lot. Top floor got the extras! And I have Crucible Warden in my opening again. This is perfect! Uh... Damage shield you. Yes. You removed all of their damage shields. Fine. <laughs> well done. Doesn't really do much at all, Timmy, but still, well done, I guess. Um. The Wickless Tycoon. Honestly, the Wickless Tycoon doesn't even need to be there anymore, but we'll put it there. For old time's sake, if nothing else. I can't put the Entombed Explosive in the front line, because then it will get, uh, it will eat the, the morsels that I put up on the top floor. If I put morsels on the top floor, and it does look like I will put morsels on the top floor. There you go. Unfortunately, we do not much uh, damage there. You move debuffs from all of your own units and buffs from mine. Rude. Uh, okay. Fatal Melting actually is enough there on the top floor already by itself. That's so good. Then that gives me even two extra units to put on that floor. 150 damage. I can kill the Darkwings in the front line with this. Actually, the Darkwings in the front line needs to die with this. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, it was going to harvest a ridiculous amount. And the only one here allowed to get ridiculous amounts of things is me. Okay. Okay, we officially did it. Do I want to go off this turn? 17 extra. Yeah, I probably do. What's okay. mine up? Top floor. Friendly unit deaths this battle. Okay. Okay. I'm going to morsel the melted. Morsel the melted. And then. Wait, where are you? It's... Wait. It's the front one, right? Yeah, Morsel Miner. There we go. 74 times? I'm going to gain plus 5, plus 5.
Now, if only we could get that unit to be a little bigger. It's feeling like it's still a bit too small for me. As soon as we give it trample, is just hilarious. Honestly, it barely even needs trample. Down. Um, I think you give it another strike. Let's do that. Let's go for a morsel, morsel. Obviously, pop both of those on the top floor. Um, remove that floor entirely. Nice. Oh, you love to see it. You absolutely love to see it. Mortal Masters are doing so much work here. They're even more powerful than they were before. And they were pretty ridiculous beforehand. Now I'm going to... But again for 10. And now I finally have access to my trample card in the next end. GG well played. <laughs> oh, good lord. I can play the thing still using the excavated Umbra though. Not like that was necessary at all, but I wanted to do it still. Just keep increasing the capacity of things. Honestly, there's like nothing I can really do here at this point. I just need to wait for the Seraph to come to the top line. I effectively just have to wait for the Seraph to want to retire. Go excavate a morsel, then making of a morsel to get another bigger morsel there, the morsel miner that is, and then yum. Got him above 500. That's all I was really aiming at. If only there was a eaten effect to trigger twice or gorge effect to trigger twice. Oh well. Maybe next time. I imagine uh, that's probably like a later unlock for the Umbra Clan. If either of those exists, that's where it would be. I really wish I had the ability to see exactly how much money the... Uh, what's his name? Wait, they are getting to the next floor, right? There's no way they're getting to the next floor. You deal 27 damage to me, and I hit you back for 121. 119, sorry. Dang it! Built the biggest unit in the world, and it doesn't even get to join the fray. Nice. Yeah, it was a pretty good run. It was decent, you know. All right, let's see our score now. Could have been better, but still uh, picked up 11 different golden cards. Whenever you, just in case you're unfamiliar, if you win a game with a card that you haven't won with before, it gets a golden frame, so you can eventually have all of the cards in a golden frame. 
Piercing, deal five damage, slay, increase damage by three permanently. I love effects like this. You know, your, your ritual dagger, your, your mainly ritual dagger uh, kind of situation of increase it per. Obviously, you're a uh, ritual dagger because it's, it's a damage example, so you can't take the other one that I am struggling to remember the name of at the moment that defends you for one by base and then increases by two every time you play it and increases by three when it's upgraded. I can't remember for the life of me. Whew. Flicker's Liquor. Whenever you play a unit, a random card in your hand reduces zero custard. If you play that with Umbra, all of your cards are free. Hell yes. Next level up is Resin Removal. Remove all debuff effects from friendly units and all buff effects from enemy units. And it doesn't even consume. Ah, interesting, interesting. Uh, so debuff effects is probably going to include burnout. So I imagine this gives you the ability to uh, keep them around. Extinguish abilities trigger an additional time. Great. Uh, wouldn't have really affected that run much at all because they were eater abilities rather than extinguish abilities. Nice. And we can actually start to see here our completion. Obviously, I am going to be aiming to get all of this 100% completed. But for the moment, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Monster Train. This is the full release of the game. The series starts now. For the first couple of days, at the absolute least, possibly up until the first week, I'm going to be releasing two episodes of this series each and every day. So make sure to subscribe so that you can stay tuned for those. I will also say, I uh, don't say this in much of my content, but I do like to stress it where it's important. Uh, if you did like the video, please click like. It does help me get my content out to new people, and it's very, very important on the first episode of a new kind of flagship series. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There is a playlist in the description down below with all of my content of this game, past, present, and future as well, by the way. There is more beta content back there if you're looking to fix your monster train itch at the moment. And there'll be a playlist down there where all future monster train content in the current incarnation of the builds will be released. Hopefully you'll be enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.